Robert is now going to bring us this morning's uh, word. Good morning. We have been studying uh, various passages in Matthew's Gospel concerning Jesus' ministry. And today we reach a very famous incident which is uh, uh, entitled The Faith of the Canaanite Woman. Like many of the personal encounters in the Gospels, Jesus comes face to face with ordinary people who become extraordinary through their encounter with Jesus. And today, this story, like many of them, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's three points. It begins with a request. A request. The context is that this is the only occasion in all four Gospels where Jesus leaves the Jewish physical territory of Palestine. He, he, for three years he ministers uh, in Palestine between the Sea of Galilee and Jerusalem. About a 70 mile up and down, up and down, up and down. This is the only occasion he leaves and he goes to the region of Tyre and Sidon, which is in modern Lebanon. These were Gentile cities, non-Jewish. 30 miles, 35 miles away. A day and a half's walk up, day and a half's walk back. The, we don't know why he went, no reason given. And Mark's account says he didn't want anybody to know he was there. So it could be he was looking for some peace and quiet. But whenever this woman finds out that Jesus is there, she immediately comes knocking at the door, begging him, begging him. Lord, my daughter is very ill. Come and heal her. Well, good for her. Jesus was famous for his compassion and his healing. He could heal this girl. Agreed? Yeah, that's a thumbs up. Yeah, he could do that. Yeah. And even he should heal her. Surely Jesus should heal this girl. Was there ever a more worthy case? A heartbroken mother come and asking eh, for a child to be healed. This is a one chance. Jesus comes into uh, uh, this region once. She has one opportunity to meet him. And she overcomes all the obstacles and she comes and meets him and she falls at his feet and he says, Jesus, please, Jesus, heal my little daughter. I mean, what parent wouldn't he say that? So that was the beginning, a simple a heartbreaking request from a desperate mother. Surely it will be granted. That's point one. And yet when we come into the middle of the story, <coughs> amazingly, <coughs> Jesus did not answer a word. Complete silence. The woman's there right in front of him. She's saying, help me, Jesus. He doesn't say anything. Which seems so unlike Jesus. We always think Jesus is, is instantaneous and in pouring out his love eh, and his compassion in people. But he doesn't say a single, not a single word does Jesus say. So the disciples jump into the awkward silence. Send her away. For she keeps crying out to us. Just get rid of her, Jesus. Just, just heal. But you can do it easily. Just touch. The, you don't even need to touch the girl. Just heal her. Send her away. It's so easy for you. Rather than a stone wall refusal. After all, that is what Jesus did all the time. Send her away, Jesus. Just heal her. Get her out of the way, and then we can get on with her. Get on with our lives. 
Then we come into the real heart of the story that makes this such a, a, an amazing insight. We get into a dialogue between Jesus and this amazing woman who seems to outthink Jesus to get the better of him in a debate. Now, no one ever does this apart from this woman. So let us follow the dialogue. Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, which is true. Uh, Jesus consistently says salvation comes from the Jews. It's the Jews first and then the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the non-Jews, include the Canaanites, the Greeks, the Romans, not the first priority. In fact, it was about 15 years later when Paul came through his missionary journeys when he said, we had to preach to the Jews first, you rejected it, we're taking the gospel to the Gentiles. And that's why we're here today, because people these centuries ago took the gospel, and it's the same gospel. The same word of Jesus. So, that's what Jesus has nothing to do with me. I was only sent for the lost sheep of Israel. You're not. You're Gentile. And then this woman makes a tremendous uh, reply. She says, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. C.H. Spurgeon, the famous 19th century London Baptist preacher said, I commend this prayer to you. That's to us. <laughs> because it is such a handy prayer. You can use it when you are in a hurry, when you are in a fright, when you are rising in the morning. I hardly know any position when you could not use it. Okay? So try and remember that. Lord, help me. I think we could memorize it. Yeah, I think we could eh, if we really tried. <laughs> Still, Verse 26, still Jesus objects. And he uses a simple analogy, an everyday analogy, that they would all understand. Jesus says, it's not right. It's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. The dog's under a table. Okay. He seems to be pro deliberately provoking to, to really making it difficult for this woman. Really stretching her face probing to see what's there and she, the woman comes back in verse 27 with a, 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 an inspired reply there's not a finer reply in the whole of the scriptures yes Lord she says but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table she, a wonderful reply it's so sharp and it's so clever that she outsmarts Jesus and this lets us see something of the, 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 the greatness of Jesus' character. He's not a big, big shot that's, that's ruling over everybody. He allows this woman, this ordinary woman, to engage with him. He draws out her faith. He leads her on. He encourages her. He never puts her down. He never makes it easy. Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Finally, the reward, the happy ending. At the beginning, there was a request, heal my daughter, please, Jesus, please heal her. There was a refusal. There was that awkward time, is it going to work, is it not going to work? The engagement. Jesus doesn't want to just say abracadabra. This happens. Engagement. The woman bests him. And Jesus answers in verse 27. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. In Mark's account, Jesus says, For such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So the request is finally granted, and the woman gets her reward. You have great faith. Only two people received this compliment from Jesus. A Roman centurion 
and this Canaanite woman. Both foreigners, both disadvantaged. Their faith was great because it did not have the advantages of being nurtured by Jewish religions. It was unlikely. It was tested severely. It involved real issues. This woman's faith conquered Jesus. We read of nothing else he did in the whole region of Tyre and Sidon. It it seems that he walked these 30 miles up. He spent the evening there and he walked back purely to meet this one person. Because one person in the eyes of Jesus is of infinite value. And that person is you and you and you and me. That's how the gospel, that's, that's the wonder of the gospel, that Jesus can take ordinary people and, and, and he makes us come alive. He makes us important. So, in conclusion, everybody likes it when the preacher says, in conclusion, I have one sad observation. No one bothered to write down this woman's name nor the Roman centurion's name. Yet she proved to have greater faith than any other person Jesus encountered, greater than all the disciples, eh, eh, greater than Martha and Mary and Jesus' mother, and yet nobody bothered to write her name down. I think that says a wee bit about human nature. And one happy observation. Jesus is still the same today. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, do not be downcast, even in these strange COVID days. Woman, you have great faith. Amen.